Hey guys, I was reading some comments in my last Kerbal video, and I saw some people hating on my choice of a dart engine for my final stage. Now I took this way too personally, and I'm gonna build a rocket exclusively using dart engines and land on ETH. So let's get right to it. So I'm starting down the vehicle assembly building, and I just put down this crew capsule, and now it's time to start out working on the boosters. So I put a nose cone on top of the crew capsule, and then a stack tricoupler. And on this, I'm putting a stack of fuel tanks, and I'm actually gonna put two layers of fuel tanks, and then on the bottom, I'm putting some dart engines like this. So this, hopefully, I can use as a set of boosters. Since dart engines are very weak, I'm gonna need a lot of them for each of the boosters. So just going for a launch here, it got off the ground, and that was a good start, but it was going really slow. And I didn't really like this, considering it was gonna need to lift a lot of weight, especially since this is just gonna be the booster, so it should be able to fly up very quickly. And you can see here, it did some weird oscillating too. Not quite sure what that was all about. So what I did is just deleted what I had and instead went for a stack quad coupler so I can add one more engine and hopefully get a bit more power out of this. I also used some struts to attach the entire thing together to keep it from doing the oscillating it was doing before. And then I just put some engines at the bottom of it and gave it another test. And here when it took off, it was much better. I was definitely gaining a lot more speed, but it was still a little bit slower than I was hoping for. And you can actually see the fuel is going down very slowly too. And I figured I probably didn't need two fuel tanks. I could just get away with one. So that's exactly what I did here, just shrunk down the booster. And now when I take off, you can see I go up much faster than before. And this is definitely good. If I have a bunch of these attached to the rocket, it should be able to get me up into a pretty good orbit. And you can see my fuel's falling down at a pretty good rate, but definitely not too fast. So that's all I need. So I'm gonna start working on the final stage of the rocket. So I put down a fuel tank and of course a dart engine and just some little fins as well, just to help guide it. And then I put a decoupler on the bottom so that I'm able to detach it from the second stage. And I also replaced the nose cone with a parachute, since once I enter Eve's atmosphere, I'll be able to use that and that's how I'll be able to land. So I put down a crew ladder and also some lights in the bottom just in case I was going to be landing at night. And then I put a stabilization module and a battery as well, pretty similar to my last rocket, so that I'm able to move around and whatever before I do some burns. And then some solar panels as well here to be able to charge up that battery. Didn't end up needing it, but it's just nice to know that they're there. And then finally, I just attached the booster to the bottom of this, just to give it a quick test to see if the boosters were powerful enough to lift anything. And the first test wasn't that good, but then I just realized that I accidentally set the dart engine on the final stage to go instead of on the boosters. So I just reversed those and gave it another test here. And you can see that the boosters are still easily able to lift up the rocket. It's definitely not as fast as before, but it's still pretty good. So with that, I wanted to start working on the third stage of the rocket. And for this, I'm just using a stack tricoupler and three sets of fuel tanks. And on the bottom, of course, dart engines. And I just have to use some struts to hold it all together to keep it from doing the weird oscillating thing that we saw before. And I used some radial decouplers, and I was gonna try to attach the booster straight to the side of the rocket, but it just didn't quite want to attach. What I did is attach a fuel tank to the top of the booster. And once I did that, it was easily able to attach to those radial decouplers. And I put some curved nose cones on all the boosters and well, go for a quick test. So it starts out pretty well, but the boosters are going a little bit slower than I'd like. I'm just gaining a bunch of height here and things seem to be kind of going okay. But when I tried to turn, things sort of just went very badly. The rocket had like no stability and ended up just doing that. I guess I should have guessed that because it has no fins or anything yet. But when I went to tackle first, there's the lack of thrust that I was getting. And to do this, pretty simple. I'm just gonna strap more boosters on this, powered by, of course, dart engines. And once I put those on the bottom, attach some curved nose cones to them. I noticed that there's a lot of rocket pieces clipping in the center. Didn't look very good, so what I decided instead was to attach the rockets to the top part of the boosters, where it's a little skinnier. And this ended up looking much better. I also added a second set of boosters, just to give me a little bit more thrust. I also added some fins to the side of these boosters. I then added some fins to the second stage of the rocket as well. And yeah, now giving you another test here, you can see it gets off the ground much easier than before. But I also noticed when I looked down on it, the one booster was swinging from side to side quite violently. So I used some struts to hold all the boosters together to hopefully keep it from doing that. And this time when I took off, it was much better. It seemed like it was totally stable. But once again, when I tried to turn, things just went badly. This time the rocket started turning to the side and it was completely uncontrollable. And it started just going into the ground. It was a disaster. So I just added more fins, thought maybe that's the solution. But the rocket lost a ton of thrust when I did this. And then I realized the fins at the bottom were getting red. And then I realized I pointed the output of the engines directly into the fins. So that's sort of a problem. So I deleted those fins that I put in and instead replaced the fins at the top of the rocket with ones that are able to tilt and steer so that I'm able to roll the rocket or just control a rocket with those fins. I also added some more to the top part of stage two. And then I added some large delta fins to the bottom of all of the boosters. And then once I put those in place, I realized I accidentally put them right in the direction of where the dart engines are going to be outputting. So I had to move them out of the way just a little bit. And once I did that, I got this sort of cool triangle pattern. 
And then finally on the edge of all of them, I just put these elevons, which is just going to help me steer and control the rocket. So once again, decided to take off. It was a little bit slower this time because all the added mass of the blades. And it was a little bit unstable. It ended up swinging from side to side. So I stacked three of these stability. So I stacked three of these stability modules in the top of stage two. And once I did that and tried to take off, it ended up being a lot more stable this time. And it was totally controllable. And even here, when I tried to go for a turn, it was still a little rough, but ended up being possible at least. So I decided to give it just a quick test and launch pad here to see how powerful stage 2 and 3 of the rockets are, since I actually never ended up checking that. So I let the first and second sets of boosters go here, and now I just have the third stage, and you can see it's actually losing speed right now. It's just not very powerful. Three dart engines, it's just not enough to lift this entire weight. But on the bright side, the final stage still seemed to be working out fine. So what I just had to do is increase the thrust to the second stage, and to do that, I'm just adding on some liquid fuel tanks, completely draining them, adding dart engines to the bottom of them, and then finally putting some nose cones in them. So I'll have double the engines on stage two, and that should pretty much be everything I need. So just like before, I let the first and second sets of boosters go, and now you can see I'm still gaining speed with just stage three. So I'm pretty much good. And all that's left to do at this point is actually go for a full flight. So I'm just starting out with all the boosters and just kind of burning straight up. So pretty standard stuff, except I'm using dart engines as boosters because I'm insane. And now when I get up to about 6,000 meters, I started doing a small turn, and I wanted to be extremely careful with this turn since the rocket was maneuverable, it just was not very well maneuverable. So after just doing some careful turns, I finally ran out of fuel of the first boosters and sent them away just before they ran out of fuel. This is so that they can burn away instead of having to hit back into the rocket, which will damage it most of the time. And then right before those rockets ran out of fuel, I sent them off as well. And now I'm just left with stage two. So I started burning further and further away and I was hoping to get closer to the epoapsis. And once I got up to just about the height I wanted to be at, I started burning once again, and this time I'm trying to circularize my orbit. So I also extended the solar panels because why not, and continue doing my burn. And you can see here I got my orbit to be fully circularized. And the periapsis is now higher than 70,000 meters. So I have a totally stable orbit, and the next thing to do is get an encounter with Eve. So Eve is that purple planet there, and I need to wait to get into the perfect position so that it can capture me when we get to the other side of the sun. So I end up waiting till about like there-ish. And now I can zoom back in, and I want a time warp to be on the opposite side of Kerbin, so I can start burning for my periapsis here. And this is going to be just about the most efficient way to get out of here, since I'll be escaping in the opposite direction that Kerbin's traveling, which is what I want since Eve is closer to the sun than Kerbin, so I actually need to kill a bunch of my speed around the sun. And you can see here those two yellow lines end up lining up just about there. And that means that my orbit will be touching Eve's orbit when we get to the other side of the sun. So now it's time to just leave Kerbin like this. And now I'm fully escaped and I'm orbiting the sun. So what I'm doing is waiting, but I'm not going to wait till I get to the other side of the sun since I actually don't have an encounter with Eve yet. What I need to do first is do a normal burn here, and this is going to get my orbit under the same plane as Eve's orbit, and this is what's going to allow an encounter. So as my descending node ends up getting smaller and smaller, you see here I end up getting an Eve encounter, and now with that I could pretty much just wait until that encounter happens. And you can even see here, right at the top of my mouse, there's Eve, and it was pretty much just a game of waiting until I got to the periapsis. So I ended up just warping there. And once I got close enough, I turned retrograde and started to do a burn to hopefully kill enough of my speed to get a circular orbit. And stage two ended up running out of energy, so I had to go to stage three, or my final stage. And after I did that, easily got my circularized orbit. And now I'm trying to get closer and closer to Eve. I actually want my periapsis to be about 80,000 meters, because Eve's atmosphere is about 90,000 meters. So I'm going to be dipping into the atmosphere just a little bit. And by doing this, I can do a series of aero breaks and hopefully kill enough of my speed that I can conserve a bunch of my fuel for the final descent. Since I actually don't really have that much, I didn't really plan that one out well, but it's okay. So here I'm getting very close to Eve, and you can see here my apoapsis is actually shrinking just a little bit, and this is because now I'm killing a bunch of my speed by burning up in the atmosphere. Just a little bit though. 80,000 meters is a good dip right here, because it doesn't completely kill my rocket, but it slows me down. And after doing that, I killed a little bit of my height, but I needed to kill a lot more. And to do this, I just kind of had to keep doing these braking maneuvers. So once again, I got close to the atmosphere, started burning up in the atmosphere just a little bit, and came out of the atmosphere, wrapped all the way around again, and started doing more burns. This was basically what happened for like 45 minutes straight. And eventually I got this orbit, where the apoapsis was extremely close to Eve. And now this is actually going to be the final burn I need to do, since once I enter the atmosphere this time, I'm not coming out. It's going to kill enough of my speed that the entire orbit is going to be inside of the atmosphere, and it's going to be completely captured. So I started doing my braking here, 
and I was hoping to start burning as late as possible so that I kill as much as my speed by just burning in the atmosphere. What ended up actually happening though was I was overheating quite a bit and I had to burn a little bit earlier than I was hoping. So you can see here my first burn, and I kill a little bit of my speed, and now I was going to go all in on the burn, but it was just a little bit too late, and my rocket ended up turning, and the crew capsule ended up heating up way too much, and... Yeah. So I loaded up the quick save and gave it another go. So once again, I'm burning up in the atmosphere, and I started burning my rocket way earlier than I was before. So now I'm killing a lot of my speed, and I'm doing a much longer burn than I did before too. And I'm hoping to kill as much of my speed as possible, so that the atmosphere doesn't just completely make me explode like it did before. And fortunately I ended up getting to the point where the burning effects ended up going away, and things were good until I ended up getting into the lower atmosphere, where I started burning again. Now this was particularly bad because my rocket decided to face prograde, and I was hoping it wouldn't do that since the crew capsule is going to get overheated very quickly. But I lost enough of my speed that it ended up not being a problem, and eventually the parachute ended up being available to deploy, which I did immediately, and I killed a ton more of my speed to the point where I felt completely comfortable. You actually see I left just a little bit of fuel left in my tank. This was just in case this parachute wasn't going to slow me down enough and I needed to do a suicide burn at the very bottom, but it ended up being perfectly fine. So I started gliding down to the bottom, I was actually using my body my rocket as a wing right here, and I was sort of just gliding around wherever I wanted. And I was hoping to land on this big mass right in the middle, and I really thought this was land, but it was most certainly not land. Once I realized this though, it was too late and this parachute ended up deploying, and I was stuck in the middle of the water. So it was fine, I was just going to have a big swimming task to do once I got to the bottom. And speaking of which, my parachute I set to deploy very early, which was a mistake because it took forever to fall down, but I can at least speed up the footage for you guys. I'm editing it right now and I'm also just going to interject something. I totally forgot to put landing gear on this, so it's probably a good thing I landed in the water, because if I was on land, I honestly don't know if I would have been able to do it without just snapping all of my fins. And after a very long falling process, I decided to turn on the lights so it would be a little easier to see the bottom since I actually was landing at night this time. And I hit the water. So, a successful landing, kind of, if you count the water as a successful landing. And I just waited until day so that I wouldn't have to be swimming in the middle of the night. And once I did that, I told Valentina to get out of the spacecraft, and just told her to swim towards shore, because I really wanted to plant my flag. So, I didn't realize how far it was at first, but it ended up being two and a half kilometers. So I just sort of weighed down my W key and my keyboard, and walked away for a while, and then just let this run. So as I approach the shore here, you'll see that I end up walking straight over it, and then going back in the water. And this is because I was away from my computer, but when I got back I ended up redirecting towards the shore, and got to the top of this little high area on this island, and then planted my flag. So guys, thanks for watching. Kind of a fun video, wanted to try out using some dart engines for a task that they were definitely not intended for. I really like using them for the final stage of the rocket, they're great there, but for everything else they're just not good. So if you have any other questions or comments or other challenges that I can do, feel free to comment them below. And otherwise, until next time.